African entrepreneurs all over the world. I am so pleased to welcome you to today's weekly assembly. African entrepreneurs gathered in this room. I'm so pleased to welcome the president and founder of Africa's Young Entrepreneurs, the largest entrepreneurship network in Africa, Dr. Sumi Smart Francis. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miriam. And um, so good to be here. Today's topic is money is scarce. There is not enough to go around. Find it. There is not enough to go around. Find it. Now, the moment you understand, Mohammed, I see you taking notes. That's a good one. From Syria alone, I see you. The moment you understand that this is a scarce commodity and that it's not enough to go around, <laughs> then you know that your entrepreneurial race is going to take a different ball game. It's a different level. Now, a lot of you will argue and say money is everywhere. Yes, money is available. But a huge chunk of this money is available to 1% of the global population who is hoarding this money. Now, the remaining percent available to the 99% of over 6 billion people, it's not enough to go around. Now, when you remember this, because this entire topic is to awake a thought process, to spark something in your mind. If you understand this, the way you run your race will be different. I think some things have made us lazy somehow, because somehow when we hustling and we were working, we just have that feeling that, okay, somehow money will come, my investors will come, investors will see my business someday. Where are those investors today? Where are they? The moment you realize that you are alone in this journey and you have to connect yourself into networks and organizations like this who understand what you're going through and have a solution that can help you in that journey because they're also going through the same thing. Then, and only then, can there be hope for you. I have a common quote that says that, yes, funders and investors do exist. Sponsors and funders do exist, but they are usually not there at the origin of your business. So if you are starting something, and all you are doing, instead of using your energy to chase around your plan, your product, your initiative, you are using it to chase funders, 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 I know that a lot of us here in this room can relate to what I'm saying. You have wasted one, two, three years of your life chasing one sponsorship or one funding that is not there. The moment you understand that, let me start from where I am. Let me find money from where I am. Let me use what I have to find this money because this commodity is scarce. It's not available to go around. Your direction will change. Your energy will change. Your aggressiveness will change and your approach to finding money will change. What do I mean by your approach? Every day when you tell yourself money is scarce, bro, it's not enough to go around. If I go into my business and a customer walks in, I tell you the way we speak to that customer is different. The moment I keep remembering that there's money is scarce, I've got a database of people who have showed interest in my business through my sales funnel, I would continue following up. The moment I know that money is scarce, I will stop being shy to ask. Entrepreneurs, a lot of us are too shy. Yes, I know what you're going through. I'm like you, I feel you. It's the same thing with me. We can't ask, we can't talk, we can't sell, we can't speak to a customer. But you know, we just have that feeling that, you know, I'm a good Christian, I'm a good Muslim, no destiny, at God's time, money will come. <laughs> Oh my God, I pity whoever is in that mindset. I charge you this evening to tell your mind and remind yourself. Remember this, when somebody tell you, I've brought food in the lounge, it's about 300 people, but that food is not enough to go around. My brother from Uganda, from Tanzania, do you remember how you go into that room? When you remember that that food is not enough to go around? From today, that is the way you should go into your business. Go into your businesses understanding that that money out there, going from customer to customer, is not enough. In Uganda, it's not enough. In Syria alone, it's not enough. In Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, Congo, DRC, Mozambique, Liberia, Tunisia, Egypt, it's not enough. 
And that is why your country is borrowing. Then who are you? If your country can be borrowing, your government is borrowing, who are you to sit down in your house and say, by the time, when the time comes, I will prosper? Hmm. Prosperity is the awakeness of the fact that I know that I can start chasing my dream now. That awakening is prosperity. Because not everybody realizes that the time is now. Not everyone. Lots of your mates are still sluggish. Lots of your mates are still thinking money is available. Those motivational speakers are still speaking to them. Money is there. You've got to get money. We are funding everywhere. African Development Bank, something, something bank. This something is bank. <laughs> but you are smart enough now to be in this room and to know it's cast. Do you know with the example I gave earlier that if there was food in the room and it's scarce, it's possible at all, even if it's a farmer from Uganda, it's not going to tell all of us. He's going to sneak in and pack his own food. Unkana from, Unkana from South Africa will pack his own. Collins from Kenya, Andrew, they will go in, they will pack their own because they know it's scarce. They just want to quickly get their own. So many of us will not leave this room going to tell other entrepreneurs in our country, guys, wake up, money is scarce. It's possible that you can be quiet about it. Yes, there is a reason why God put you in this room just for you to hear this and wake you up. So all those times that you've given up, you're tired. When people are running, you are tired. When people are out there chasing, you are thinking at your own time, when the time is right, you'll be successful. If the time is not right, you won't be chasing your dreams now. The time that is right is the time that you are actually on your entrepreneurial journey. That's the time God has given you. The time that is right means you are alive. The time that is right means that you have an idea, you have a product, you have a business that you want to run with. That alone has gone in your favor and it's enough for you because not everybody has that. The rest is for you to run this race. Go out there Monday morning with a different approach. Open your business, open your office, call your team together and say, guys, money is scarce. There is not enough to go around. And I don't want to miss out on this. From now on, pick up the phones, call all our customers. Old, new, past, present, future. Call everybody. We are doing marathon phone calls. We are bringing them back by force, by fire, by whatever way, we are going to get them back. And you start calling like crazy people because you know money is scarce. Money is scarce, you continue knocking on doors. You will not be tired of no's. No's will be nothing to you because you understand that what you are chasing is a scarce commodity and it's not enough to go around. Money is scarce, you would quickly work on that product. Some of you have ideas, but you are sleeping on it. <laughs> you are saying, I will launch it in 2023. I will release that book in 2025. I will plan it this as if money is waiting for you. When people like me are out there, people like, like, like Spusiso is out there, Daniel from Ghana is out there chasing money. They are ready to pack everything available. Billionaires are out there chasing everything. You are there and you are saying, I will do this next month. You are still procrastinating your idea, your business. African entrepreneurs, I challenge you this night. Money is scarce. Get back to the track. Release that idea now. No matter what it is, do not wait for it to be perfect. Perfection is the enemy of progress. Nothing, forget about it. It's the enemy of progress. You want to do something, I say, no, I want to finish it. Then it must be perfect. It's a lie. I used to be like that. Release it. The market will tell you if it's the right product or not. When the market re rejects it, change it, repackage it, throw it back to the market. When they reject it, they package it, throw it back again. They reject it, put another idea, make the price cheaper, throw it back. Gamble, fight, wrestle with the market. Destroy the market. I feel you, I feel you from Ghana, from South Africa. The cannabis man is not smoking weed. He just feels that he needs to get out there. Go into that market and wrestle with the market. Wrestle with it. Let, let me actually spotlight you now because I can feel your energy and I, and I, and I can feel your spirit. Wrestle with the market. Get out there. Get what is yours. Do not wait. Do not wait. People are packing things from that same South Africa. Go out there. People do not need to believe in your product. As long as you believe in it, 
throw it to the market, grab what you can, take what you can, get your share of the market. How painful will it be to live in a world, exist in this world and did not partake of it? How painful will it be to live this world without living with your own state? The world is a company, we are all shareholders. It depends if you get paid or not. Some of us will leave this world without taking anything with us. And some of us will live with a chunk share of investment of the world. Everything has been made to our favor, from our resources in Africa, to our culture, to our tradition, to our behavior, to everything works in our favor. You are born in a continent of problems so that you can translate those problems to profit. And you are sitting down thinking that money will come to you. Who told you that lie? Who ministered to you and said, this year is your year, is your year of money? It's a lie. There's nothing like year of money. You find that money. Those things make you relax, makes you comfortable unnecessarily. It makes you calm unnecessarily. It makes you lazy. Chris from Ghana, I'm talking to you. Money is scarce. Get out there with your tech idea. Get into Ghana. Take what you want from Ghana. And don't stop in Ghana. Get that product, that innovation. Take your share from Africa. Take your share from the world. The entire world should be your marketplace, not just Ghana, not just Africa. You know, I could go on and on about this, but right now I need to conclude. And I'm going to conclude with this. Of course, while you're chasing this cash commodity, you will get hard. You will get weak, you will get discouraged. There's many no's out there waiting for you. There is many no's. But like I used to say to everyone, I'm going to end with this. That when you get those no's day by day by day by day, appreciate it. Because the more no's you get, the closer you are to your yes. The closer you are to your yes. So when no no comes, say yes, that no is passed. At least I've taken one no out of it. Another no comes, no, thank God, this no is gone. Another investor says no, oh yes, this no is gone, one no is gone. Another customer says no, that no is gone. You are, you know, you're digging it out the nose because there is a yes waiting for you. There is a yes waiting for you. So from today, let your nose motivate you. I'm going to see you next week. And next week, when I see you, I want to see at least three people who has gone out this week to say, you know what? I went with this understanding that money is scarce, with the understanding that it's not enough to go around. But I have started getting mad. I thank you all for listening to me tonight. I wish I could go on, but it's next Saturday for us to talk more about what we can do to not just make Africa a better place, but make ourselves, our family, our communities, and ultimately the world a better place. I love you all. Bye-bye.